Can you hear me okay? 467. A song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior King. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. Now, that's, that's what you're doing right now. Amen. When you sing a song and you lift his name up, uh, you preach to the heavens, amen, to everybody that there's someone you know, amen, that's special to you. Number two, I have a Christ that's satisfied. You're, you're saying to the world, hey, it's okay now. It used to be bad, but now it's okay. Amen. Amen. Number two, here we go. I have a Christ that satisfies since I have been redeemed to do his will my highest prize since I have been redeemed. Now sing, since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. I have a witness bright and clear since I have been redeemed. Dispelling every doubt and fear since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. I have a home since I have been redeemed, where I shall dwell in. Eternally, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. Amen. Now, this is Sunday morning, right? Amen. And it, it is sunny outside, right? No, <laughs> in my heart, 472, 472, 472. That Bible says we are to be the light of the world. Amen. All right, 472, here we go. Walking in sunlight all of my journey, over the mountains, through the deep vale. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Now hold it tight. Here we go. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is nigh. Now, you just can't sing that song and not smile, amen? All right, here, here we go, number two, shadows around me. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is my light, in Him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, praising His praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, 
Pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, walking in love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Hey man, Brother Jim Hansen. How's everybody doing? That's a good thing. Miss Blake and Chip, we're glad you're here. Good to see you. Had to go back and give her a hug. That's why I'm late. But, uh, guys, <clears throat> just talking to Steve. Balance on this is now 477. We started at 503. We started in February. That's 26 grand we don't pay to the bank. You guys did a good job. That should be uh, commended. So, uh, pray for Jackie Birch. She, uh, she let her niece, Maggie, to the Lord. She's trying to get her here today. I don't know if she's going to make church or not. But you know how that happened? She opened her mouth, told somebody about Lord Jesus. I think sometimes we get, <laughs> sometimes we uh, we get in front of somebody who want to talk to them about Jesus Christ, and somebody shoves a handful of cotton balls in your mouth, and you can't say it. It's like anything else we do in life. You practice it, it'll come naturally. Well, Howard sent me a, a tape about a, a guy in Victoria, Australia, and he's Preachers around the world were talking about how'd you get saved, and they said, well, I was walking down George Street in Australia, and for 20-some years, this guy witnessed to 10 people a day, handed them a tract. You know if you die today, you go to heaven. How simple does that get? Turned out he had a bunch of missionaries, uh, evangelists, and preachers all around the world because they got saved on George Street. Man went to see him. He was feeble and dying. He says, I haven't done much for the Lord. He's populated the world with preachers and missionaries. Open your mouth, folks. That's what it's all about. Jackie, I thank you. I was just talking about you a little bit there. But I was wondering where your niece, Maggie, how she's doing. I haven't seen her since Wednesday. Well, amen. She's, she's saved. We just got to get her. Amen. Yeah. Ask you to pray for Franco. He has some needs, whatever they are. Prayer can help him. And um, Jackie has an unspoken, so we're going to go with that and lift her up. We had a, a notification to pray for Ken McDonald, some vision issues. I understand he's okay. So that's a, he was here to perform your wedding. I hadn't seen him since we bought his van from him 20 some years ago, <laughs> whatever it was. But. Tonight, Gary Lutrick will be here preaching. So, I need y'all to come back and support him. And on the 16th of this month, Mary, T Mary Tucker is having a Christmas party at her home at 3 o'clock. So, we want to support that, and uh, I thank you for doing that. I thank you all for, uh, for this debt reduction. That's a, we're not giving the money away. That's what it means. You're not giving it to the bank. You're actually getting to observe some savings. Our loan will collapse faster than you know what to do with it. And today is Debt Reduction Sunday, and it's a blessing to watch these little kids come up and, and give. It's teaching them how to give, and we'll teach them how to serve. And uh, next thing you know, you have a bunch of little Christians running around ready to do something. Because I'm looking around, you, a lot of us here ain't going to be here in a, long, in a few years, you know. So it's uh, if it wasn't for... Gloria and her hair dyeing station, we wouldn't, we'd have nothing but blue hair. So. <laughs> so, uh, 
So. You better move on, brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm moving down the road pretty slow now, aren't I? It's failing quick. Yeah. <laughs> next, next week is... Uh, yeah, I might not be here, yeah. <laughs> next week... Uh, yes, ma'am. What number are you? Clarol number what? Right. And his first name again? Butch. Butch. We'll do that. Butch Majors, Donnie's dad, has cancer, and we want to keep him lifted up in prayer. COVID, COVID, not, not cancer, COVID, I'm sorry. C word. Yes, sir. You witness him to him? You witness him to him? Good. We were singing a song uh, about redemption. The pastor's been with me when I go down to Scottaway Road. I can take you to the spot where I was redeemed. And I know it because God spoke to me right there, man. It's the, the shade went up. So uh, I have a blessed redeemer, and I'm thankful for that. Um, this coming Friday through Sunday... We will have Samson Ryman with us. This afternoon we have play practice and what else? Uh, this afternoon is the play practice full day. Uh, next Saturday is 1130 again. There's a school dress rehearsal. Uh, so we're down to the 10th service. Uh, it's this afternoon and Sunday is play. Okay. All right. Is that today or is it? Okay. So today you're going to have play practice. Next Saturday you have full dress rehearsal. And Sunday right after service you're going to have practice again. Okay. And then we're going to have uh, Brother Ryman with us and uh, so forth. Don't forget you have uh, Gary Lutrick tonight coming in. He's driving in. Pray for him. He's driving in from Manorazzi's up in uh, Delaware. And uh, does anybody have anything else? Okay. That's huge right there. Yes, ma'am. Our brother-in-law, Arthur, is still on with a Okay, uh, pray, for, pray for salvation first, healing second. Uh, anybody have anything else? Tanner, I didn't know who you were. You used to sit on my lap however many years ago that was. when you. <laughs> but, but I'm looking, I said, who's this guy? What did he grow up? <laughs> huh? I'm getting older, I know. Anybody have anything else? I'm glad you're here. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you haven't signed up yet and you'd like to do some of the story play, um, Miss Vivian and Sam Keith will be singing about Friday night at 3 until uh, Sunday, well, after the play. The, the toys for the kids, when does that end? That's due uh, next week. Okay, I, I'm just going to give you some money and then you, you take care of it. All right, <laughs> take money, okay. Um, anybody have, have anything else? Okay. Um, we're going to take up an offering. Steve's looking at me like, don't forget the offering. Don't forget the <laughs> I got you. Um, pray for the offering. 
Pray for pastor's message. Pray for travel mercies. Wade, why don't you take care of that for us? Let's get a songbook turned to 316, 316 in the red songbook, 316, oh to be like thee, blessed redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. That's the desire of our heart here at Anchor, is you have that desire in your heart. Brother Ben taught about it in Sunday school, he had a real good lick on, on the heart, and that's what we want. That's, that's, boy, if we, it, that's the hard part, isn't it? If I can just get my heart right, I'll be, I mean, put, my body follows along, but that hard boy, it, you got to work on that bad boy. It's, it's a mess. All right, number 316, O oh, to be like thee. Sing out now, sing. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of life's treasures, Jesus I perfect likeness to wear. Oh, to be like Thee, oh, to be like Thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as Thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. And that's a prayer. Oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, loving, forgiving, tender and kind, helping the helpless, cheering the fainting, Seeking the wandering sinner to find. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like the lowly in spirit, holy and harmless, painless and brave, meekly enduring, cruel reproaches, willing to suffer others to save. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, Lord, I am coming. Now to receive anointing divine, all that I am and I am bringing, Lord, from this moment all shall be thine. Hold oh, to be like thee, hold oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, 
Stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee while I am pleading, pour out my spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple made for thy dwelling, fit me for life and heaven above. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Amen. That last phrase, that's the purpose, that's the goal of church. Is Lord stamp that, you know, is, is get my heart right so he can stamp his image deep in my heart. You have a seat, and we got Miss Rebecca. You got a special for us? All right. And then we'll have Pastor Bob.
thank you, that one person that said that. <laughs> the rest of you are going like, not you again. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah this morning. Appreciate the Sunday school lesson. Brethren, if you're not uh, getting in on that, I even come out and sit in on it because I, it's good. I need it. You need it. And then one of these days you're going to go to God and say, I don't know why all this is. Well, you've been in Sunday school. You might have learned why you're going through what you're going through and all that other stuff. How many of you believe the Lord is a wonderful God? I believe he is. Um, uh, pray for me this morning. I'm on some kind of medication. I, it, it, I've talked to somebody this morning, and I think it was uh, uh, Jonathan or, or Stephen, and I said, you know what, this thing about getting old, it's like all they do is pump medication in you, take this pill, that pill, that pill. You do this doctor appointment. I, I, my wife told me the other day, she said, you got a doctor appointment for this. And I'm going, what? I didn't know it. <laughs> you got a doctor appointment for that. I said, even so come Lord Jesus. I'm tired of all these stupid doctor appointments. I want to see Dr. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 25, if you would, this morning. And uh, I want to brag on God. Do you mind if I do that a while? Uh, he's a wonderful Savior. Do you believe that? Act like you believe it. Put a smile on your face and say, isn't he great? He saved Ben. Look what he did to Ben. Ben, we teased him a long time, and then he found, a, he found him a wife and got him a little girl now. Now he's going to protect her, not the wife, a little girl. <laughs> we used to get him down there, Brother Turner and I. We were, not, we were not very nice to him, but we did it in jest. But poor Ben, he took it. What? what? Who said what? Who said that? Oh, you're getting bold now, aren't you? <laughs> Ben's a blessing. Um, Brother Turner, he, uh, <laughs> he's something else. He still owes me a steak dinner. I hope he's listening to this. He said, well, you got to get to Pensacola. It's an awful long ways to go get a steak dinner, isn't it? Isaiah chapter 25, uh, 25 and we'll just read the first four verses of it. But I want to preach to you on the thought, a wonderful, wonderful Savior is mine. Don't you think that? I got to thinking about the other day, Lord, what could I do? What could I preach? What can I instruct? What can I give? And the Lord says, why don't you just brag on me a while? I ain't heard from you in a while. Amen. Uh, you know how great he is? He saved Wade. And he saved the one that said amen to that too. Amen. <laughs> All right, chapter 25, verse 1. Oh, Lord, thou art my God. How personal can that be? Can you say that this morning? Amen. Thou art my God. He can reach out into the ocean to a, in a ship and find an old boy named Howard Hunter and reach down to somebody, tell him about Jesus. How to, what, what a wonderful God we have. Yeah. Amen. You say, well, that was coincidence. Oh, was it? It was coincidence that God saved him, God used him, God put him on the, on the mission field. <laughs> A wonderful Jesus is mine. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll get, I'm going to about ready to take a fit. Help me with this medication because it's gone. <laughs> I, had I known it, I wouldn't have took it before I came here. For thou hast made of a city, verse 2, a heap of a defense city of a room, a, pa a, pa a palace of strangers to be a city. It shall never be built. Therefore, shall the strong people glorify thee in the city of the terrible nations, shall fear thee, for thou hast been a strength to the poor. Thou hast been a strength. <laughs> I'm poor, <laughs> and he's sure been a strength to me. Amen. A strength to the needy in his distress. Hey, listen to this. He is a refuge from the storm. <laughs> I'm going to just walk on water here in a minute. <laughs> I got to thinking about this thing, and this thing is just like, what do I have to pout about? What do I have to drop my head about? What do he is my strength. He's my everything. 
You say, I can do this by myself. No, you can't. You can't walk down the street by yourself. Amen. You can't open a door by yourself. It's God that gave you the brain to show you how to open the door. A refuge from the distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. When thou, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Brother Wade, pray for us, please, sir. Amen. Now you look at this thing, and Isaiah is sort of pumping up and telling you about how good God is. And uh, it would be good every once in a while if you just get out of character a little bit and lose your dignity and just say, hey, man, God is good. Hey, listen, you wouldn't be sitting here this morning if it wasn't for God. Think about it. Devil, you say, well, I'm saved. Yeah, well, devil, go ahead and say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to leave you here. I'm going to get you out of here because if you're going to witness, if you're going to start learning, you're going to start teaching. I tell you what, you better pray for Ben because the devil had his way. He'd bring this young man down. You better pray for him. Why? Because he's teaching about God and how God operates and what God thinks and what he does and what God wants from you. And you think somebody's not going to go after him? You better be in prayer. You say, what about you? I'm too old anymore. I don't know about me. But what I do know is God has been good to this old preacher. I, I tell you what, Howard Hunter could not get on the Philippines in Howard Hunter's strength. Howard Hunter could not be called. Howard, he couldn't do anything if it wasn't for a great God. Hey, think about it a minute. You sitting in a chair sitting there all dressed up and all ready to go. Listen, what a great God we have. I think of Paul. As a miry clay, he came. I think of Paul where he was on the Damascus Road. I think of Paul when God looked down and Paul said, who, me? You know what? The presence of God is so awesome that it knocked Paul to his knees. I wish the presence of God could come in this place like that at times that we just get so overwhelmed, so in awe by him. That little girl that apparently Miss Jackie led to the Lord. I preached years and years and years ago at Brother Bob Hall's church. He's an older gentleman, older than me. He's in his 90s. And I guess he's still preaching as far as I know. And uh, I preached there, and I told you guys about it before. Uh, a lady ended up getting saved, and... And uh, I was still fresh in Bible school, and I, I, stood up and, I stood up and said something. That lady got saved, and they go, like it was a, an ordinary event. I don't care if a kid gets saved. It's a marvelous work and movement of God. And, buddy, I tell you what, what you ought to do is take your little pharisaical thinking sometimes and allow your mind drift back to the day when you didn't know God, when you didn't have God. Hey, you know what? Isaiah, he's bragging on God. Have you ever just want to brag on him? <laughs> you get to thinking about it. A young man who was at a young age called to preach. He wanted to do something for God. Now, down south, this is pretty, uh, uh, it, it's a little different than it is up north. <laughs> Amen. Uh, they're not quite as conservative. I was talking to Gary Lutrick yesterday. Uh, and you know how I met Jack Wood? And I've probably told you this before. I met Jack Wood because he was riding on the back of another man. You say, are you telling me preaching? No, I'm not kidding you. I went to a, a thing down at Brother, uh, was it Brother Lackey's? Brother Lackey's down. Anybody ever went to Brother Lackey's in North Carolina? Brother Hunter, was it an experience? Or <laughs> I... I Somebody said, there goes Jack Wood, and he's, he's literally, the, the singing is going on, and people are jumping up. He said, well, that's hideous. That's ridiculous. What are you going to do when you sing? I mean, for, first, your first step in heaven, you look up there, and there he is. You're going to be like, uh, uh, well, there he is. It's nice to see you, Lord. You're going to look around and go, man, look at this place. Look at... You know what? And every knee shall bow. And every... 
you'll drop down, amen, you'll look up. But uh, Brother Jack Wood, I saw him, and they said, there goes Brother Jack Wood in his hat. He had always wore this cowboy hat, and the hat flipped off on the back of him. I said, who is that old man? Uh, Jack Wood. <laughs> and you know, Brother Jack, you know what God did for Jack Wood? Jack Wood got saved and, and got him out of prison. You know what Jack Wood said? I never had life without him. You have life because of him. <laughs> Gary and I was talking about Brother Jack. I got pictures in my office sitting on the, as you go in, if you turn around and look back up on the top of the wall, there's Buddy Cargill, Buck Beaver, and Jack Wood. And you know what was happening? Shirley, your dad was showing him how he does one-handed push-ups. You remember that? He would do one-handed push-ups, and Jack was like, are you kidding me? And some other guy, I don't know who it was from there. But uh, you know what Jack Wood was all about? God. God. You know what this church needs to be about? Not about personalities, not about other people. It's about God. Amen. He's a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Can you say that this morning? He's how can he take a young man and insert within him something and make him something that can be looked at and respected because of him? Everything that you should be should be about him. That young man was called to preach, listening on a radio station by an old hillbilly preacher down in North Carolina, and he said, God reached down and saved me, and from that point on, 20-some years later, that young man, God, used him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a great thing. Brethren, listen, we always look for all kinds of things, but I, I just want to tell you about this wonderful Savior of mine. Is he yours? Do you know him? I, I'm going to give you another chance. Do you know him? Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I thought everybody wants to sleep on me. They would sing songs down there. I, I just want to give you a few things about this thing. The relationship with God that can be asserted. Uh, you think about Isaiah continues to teach us about the things and the person and the nature of God. And in our text, we learn about how wonderful your God is. Now, you know what? When you meet that little girl that, that's your love of life. Oh, she's so wonderful. Oh, he's such a wonderful guy. You don't mind saying it when it comes to that type of relationship. But you know what? When you see him for the first time, you're going to say, worthy. Amen. Worthy. Amen? I'm telling you something this morning. There's a thing that goes on in this generation. All your trials and all your troubles and all your tribulations are designed for one thing. Take your mind off of him and put it on them. You need to put your mind back where it belongs on him. Do you know who can control situations in your life? Well, you know, if I take this, I, no, God controls. He expects you to have some common sense about you, but God controls what goes on in your life. Amen. You say, well, the devil made, devil ain't never made you do anything. You made a decision and you want to blame it on somebody else. You make decisions in life. As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. He made a decision. Didn't ask his wife, didn't call her up and say, what do you think, babe? Can we do this? Brethren, it's about your wonderful, wonderful. You tell me somebody else would leave where he left, come and do what he did, and go back and wait on you and every day baby nurse you and help you through situations and put a spirit of God and dwelling inside of you to do what he does for you. You can't tell me. You're a child of God. You can't tell me that if you're a child of God and you try to go down the wrong path and you try to do the wrong things, that God, the spirit of God, doesn't say, hey, stop it. Ben was teaching this morning. He's trying to tell you something. You can go for him or you can go against him. Amen. You can learn something about him. Why? Because he is a wonderful Savior. Look who he came to. Look what he came, where he came from. 
I, I, I almost preached that thing on, over in, on uh, Genesis over there on God doesn't want your Isaac. You know what God wants? He wants your faithfulness. He didn't want Isaac. Do you remember reading about the relationship of Abraham and Isaac? What was he get? He's going to make his seed as what? How's he going to do it without it? You say, well, he didn't know what was going on. I, 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 I sit down and I deliberated over it, and then I sit down again and I talk to a man by the name of Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, and I said, people talk about God doesn't want you. Isaac, you know what God really wanted? Test your faithfulness. Do you have faith in him and God will do? Look what God said, and I guarantee you in the back of his mind, he was going, how are you going to do that? Because take thy child, thy only child. He didn't recognize the, one, the other one, the one that's given all the trouble in this day and age. You know who I'm talking about. The relationship with God that you can have. You know what I find strange? Think about it. Wade, why does God want to have a relationship with you? I mean, if you go to one of the upper crust people and, well, you know, you can't uh, come in to me because I'm ranked here, you're ranked down here. God wants to have a relationship with you? Are you kidding? You say, who are we talking about, preacher? We're talking about God Almighty. We're talking about the creator of heaven and earth. Amen? Amen. We're talking about the soon coming Jesus Christ. Brethren, I'll tell you the relationship with God that can be asserted. You can have a relationship with God. But, you know, you said, well, God makes that decision. No, you make it. As for me and my house, who's making the decision? He's making it, saying, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do for God. I'm going to be a witness for God. I'm going to let my light shine that others might see him in me. It's a tough life, brethren, but it's the best one you can get. Ben's up here teaching this morning. You can have it your way or you can hit the highway. <laughs> you got to go God's way. If you don't go the way God goes, guess what you're going to get? You're going to have to stand one day before a holy and a righteous God. He's going to say, what would you do with what I gave you? No, you don't think you are? Okay. We won't talk then. The God that's exclaimed, the notice verse 1, Isaiah calls him what? He calls him Lord. He calls him something. It's a God that can be seen, a God that can be heard, a God that cares for you, the God that can be experienced. What was Paul before he got saved? He was a murderer. People say, well, I don't see how God can... But you're not God, though, are you? He came to seek and to... Who? Oh. So we're all level when it comes to that, right? We, we get into... Well, I, I came out of Catholicism, and we had mortal, and then remember the venial sin? You know what a venial sin is? It's one you can't even think of. It doesn't matter. It's like, well, what you can do is you can go and here's what you do. You go and pay for your penance, and then once you do purgatory, you know, purgatory, <laughs> once you finish purgatory, then you get out. What happens when you, you sin again? You go back in. Can you imagine in, out, in, out, in? <laughs> I mean, what a crazy thought that is. But my God. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, does what? Cleanses us from? He's talking about a God that should be experienced. Have you experienced him? Do you know him? He's talking about a God that can be exalted. I will exalt thee, verse 1. I will lift thee up. Amen. 
Can they see Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory? Hey, listen, you say, I've got people that won't get around me, and friends, I lost friends. No, you didn't lose friends. You gained a walk with God. It's not you they don't like. It's the one they see in you. You know what they want to do? They want to try to trip you up to see if, you, if we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful and just to... And what does he do? Cleanse us from... That's a God that I know. He's the one that loves you. He's the one who died for you. He's the one when they said, hey, uh, you can't go... No, know ye not that I must be about my father's business. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is this. What I started to find out about myself is that we find excuses in our life why we are what we are when God says you don't have an excuse. All you got to do is keep your relationship with me. How you walking with him? Tough stuff. God that can be experienced. A God that can be exalted. Boy, I, I will exalt thee. I want to. Years ago when I first got saved, it bothered me a little bit. People said, well, you're one of them holier now. People that you used to mock and laugh about. Now, be honest with yourself. Do you ever, before you got saved, did you ever sort of like, hey, yeah, he got religion. He got it. You know, he got religion. I don't have religion. I was religious. Religiously wrong, religiously messed up, religiously getting in trouble, religiously doing all. But I met the S-A-V-I-O-U-R. I met him face to face one day. You know what he did? He saved me. He did exactly what he said he would do. And you know what, brethren? He'll do it for you. And I, I, I remembered very vividly that when I got saved, I, these poor, two poor guys on the wall, we were working as a team, and I've told you this before, but the wall was so tall, Ben, because you were in that construction area. It was so tall that as it progressively would go up and they would take the horizontals and then they would put them on and they would put bands in between it to hold the structure of the wall so it wouldn't flap in. So you had to pass stuff up to them. I had no idea. Some people say you don't have any idea what you're talking about now. That's okay. I'm up here. You're down there. So just listen. Those boys would sit up there and they'd go, I hadn't been saved maybe a week and a half, maybe a little less than that, a little more than that. And I, I'd say, yeah, but I, that Sunday I went in there and I said, man, I was just like you. Uh, I, I was drinking, drunk it, and saying all kinds of things to them. I said, but you know what? God showed me where I was going and what I, what I was doing. And the devil was right there doing what he does best. Well, you'll have to give up your buddies, your friends, your this, your that. And I'm like, uh, all they ever did was borrow money, never pay it back, get me in trouble every time I turned. And so I finally looked at it, and God says, there's only one friend, and he died for you, that you could have life. And I thought, he said, come unto me, all you labor and heavy, I will give you rest. I didn't know it then. He said, I am the way. And I got to thinking about that. Honestly, before God, I never, Jim, it was like your experience standing out there in that graveyard. Honestly, before God, I was out in the aisle before I even knew I got up. And I'm standing there, and I'm like, and I looked over, and some of the old guys I worked with, but he had come to the, to the speakers. It was Jack Green that was preaching. And I, I just remember it just as, as it was yesterday. And the Lord said, look down, look over there. Tears started running down my face. And I said, God, I don't want to reject you. I, he, the devil says, what are you going to do if you're friends? And Jesus Christ said, I'm a friend that died for you. I got saved. The poor boys on that wall were the <laughs> unfortunate place they couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> they were in the wall. And so they had to go up, and they couldn't get out. 
And I would say, I want to tell you what happened that Sunday. You said, <laughs> said you done been telling me about 15 minutes of it. If you shut up, as soon as we get this wall done, we'll talk to you. But you know what? Somehow along the way, I started to lose the excitement, the enthusiasm. And listen, I don't want God to be ashamed of me, and I don't want to be ashamed of what I've done with the life he's given me. God that has experienced, you can experience him. You should exalt him, not just with your mouth, with your life, because he gave it to you. He gave you life and gave it to you what? More abundantly. Number two, the reliability of God that can be attested. Isaiah's telling us that we can have a personal relationship with him. Now, if you went up and said to Donald Trump, I want to be your buddy. I want to have a relationship. I want to know you. I can call you on the phone, talk to you. And he'd go, well, I want to be your president. I ain't here to be your buddy. I can do that with him. And you can too. That relationship, he's my God, my Savior, my everything. He's the one that gave me life and gave it to you. And he gave you a life, not just in the flesh. He gave you a promise. He gave you scriptures. He gave you something that you can lean on. That's my God. A relationship with God can be attested. Isaiah was not only telling us we can have a personal relationship with God, but he's telling us what God means to us. He tells us that God is a faithful God. I've heard Christians say, God let me down. No, he didn't. You wouldn't have life if it wasn't for him. God didn't let you down. He's paved the way. He took your help. Can, can you imagine that? He took your hell for you. People talk about you can lose your salvation. How can you lose what you didn't pay for? He said, I give unto you eternal. You got eternal life? How'd you get it? Is God an Indian giver? I give unto them eternal life. The counsels are faithfulness and truth. Faithful to God, he's one that is dependable and reliable. There's never a time that I could call, call on God that I didn't know. He might not answer what I want. <laughs> but he's reliable. You ever buy things that don't work? You ever read the advertisement? Well, first of all, you shouldn't be listening to advertisements because that's exactly what they're doing, trying to get in your pocket. This glue works. This great stuff works. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And, you know, I, I was driving then an old sports car that I got out of the dealership, and uh, the the mirror would just fall off. So I went and bought this super-duper, really nice glue stuff, and I paid the price for it, and I said, well, if, it, if it's expensive, then it must be good. And I got that stuff up. In fact, i tell you what I did, Brother Hunter. I even taped it up there so that stuff would have an opportunity to hold itself. And then when I thought due time was good, I was good, and I took the tape off, got all the things off. I said, yeah, I'm proud. I did that. Yeah, That was a good thing. I mean, that's about as far as my abilities with that stuff goes. But anyway, I, I was riding down the road, and I shifted in the second going down the road, and the little sports car was going real good, and all of a sudden I watched the mirror go. Aww. I looked over, and I said, I must not have pushed. I pushed that dumb mirror back up there like that riding down the road, and I had to come to a stop sign. Then I'm starting off again. When I started out in first gear, it went. <laughs> you know what I figured out? Somebody lied to me. 
Somebody told me, sold me a bill of goods and said, this stuff does the job and it holds. Let me ask you a question. How long have you been saved, Jim? It still work? Has it ever failed you? Isn't that an amazing thing? God said, I give unto you not just eternal, but he gave you life. I hate things that don't work. That worked. I'm talking about 1975. I'm getting around 50 years ago that Jesus Christ died for me and saved my soul. And I tell you, I've failed him, but he's never failed me. I can feel the, the feelings of the prodigal as he's coming back home to the Father. People say, I don't really care much. Well, I'm, I'm preaching, you listen, and you can preach when you want to. But the deal of it is, that prodigal said, I believe I'll go home. You know what he found out? He found out some really important things. He found out that without the Father, the guidance and the leadership and the fellowship with God, you're susceptible to anything. See what? He was where? In the what pens? You know what he just said one day? I believe I'll go home and eat with the Father. The table is spread. I can imagine in my eyes, eyes and people say this and that about the, what happens there and, you know, they don't really go. But I think it's just a marvelous part of Scripture in there. It shows the reliability of the Father. It shows that God is patient, long-suffering. And here comes the old boy down. And every day you could see, in the mind's eye, you can see every day the father's praying and he's looking and he's hoping. He's, and there comes that boy over the top of the crest of the hill. And as he approaches to the father, you have an elder brother. You always, you ever meet elder brothers? They're the naysayers. Those are the ones who say, yeah, well, they've done this before. You know how that goes, don't you? <laughs> Put a little southern on it because they're real susceptible to think you just a backslidden bum. All of sin that comes short of the glory of God, my friend. And that elder brother wanted to get out there and say, what about me? I stayed at home. Yeah, well, you were smart. But the world got him. Let me tell you something, Christian. The grace, greatest place, the greatest person you can fellowship with is him. Without him, you're a mess. Without God, you're a mess. And there that old prodigal was, coming back home to God. Where are you at with God, your relationship with God? The reality that he can attest. The promise of faithfulness, the promise, the proven faithfulness, the perfection of faithfulness, the resource the resources that God appropriated to him. You're rich, whether you know it or not. Did you know it? <laughs> Buddy Carl, you used to say, well, if I'm rich, I'm, I'm broke financially, <laughs> but I'm rich faithfully. I got that same feeling. Serena and I, we're getting all, all nervous because we've got about five or six more payments on the house. We're going, what's going to break now? What do we got to do now? <laughs> I can't wait to get from under debt. But you know what? September the 21st, 1975, when I bowed my head, he paid a debt he did not owe. Amen. He took all that off of me. and He died for me. And the only thing I want to get to you, since he's done so much for you and me, and he, would you agree with me? He's a wonderful God. Are you willing to serve him? Are you willing to stand up for him? Tell someone, boy, uh, Miss Jackie had told about that young lady. You say, well, she's just a kid. Well, thank God she got it before she had to be one of us adults. Amen. Did, did you see, see, maybe all that garbage behind her is behind her. Amen. It won't get there to her. Maybe by the grace of God, maybe some uh, fine Christian teachers, maybe some fine Christian people would show her 
how to walk and talk and live for God. It might not hurt that way. But I tell you tonight or this morning that a lot of times people are going through what they're kids and kids are going astray because they don't have anything or anybody to look to. I have him. I can't thank him enough. His proven faithfulness, the perfect faithfulness, and then the resources that God gives to us. Isaiah said that God has been a strength to the poor. He's been a rope to the one that needs rescue. I'm telling you something about God. He wants to help you. He wants to help you grow. This thing, everybody's getting all excited. I'm going to stop, but pray for me on this medication. It's like, woo <laughs> But I'm not worried about who wins the election. Can I tell you that? I tell you who's going to win, who God allows to win. You say, well, I want Trump. I want God. You understand that? Well, I want the, No, <laughs> I want things to get better. The gas prices get Where I'm going, you don't need gas. <laughs> Where I'm going, I don't even need a car. <laughs> Amen. Get your mind back on where it should be. There are people dying and going to hell, and nobody is giving them the truth. We need to tell them. But could I say, I'd rather see him than hear about him. Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. Do you know him? Are you living for him? Do people know that you're saved. Brother Crailer, years ago, probably told you this before, but years ago, you had the telemarkers to call you, now you got the phone. Um, potential, what spam? Serena has that thing doing all the time. It, my phone rings, potential spam. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll grab that phone up and say, I'd like to sell you something. <laughs> Well, Jack Crailer, he would get those things before they got all the little devices, and they would call, and he'd pick it up and say, I'm not buying anything, but I'm giving you something. And people would go, what? He says, I want to give you something. Well, what do you want to I want to give you a, 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 tell you a story about Jesus Christ. And he started using it to witness and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, I don't like this. And I, I ain't talking about his personal problems. I'm talking about what he did. We have opportunities every day to let Jesus Christ in us be seen. The hope, the hope of glory. Can they see him in you? Do they know who you are? Do they know who you live for? One day, and the Bible says, every man shall give an account of himself unto God. You know what I figured about that then? I figured you can't lie to God. It ain't like when my dad would come home and my mom would say, now, that little rascal there, he did this and he agitated his brother and he got his brother and him in a fight. That's how I come I lost my front tooth because my brother knocked it out. Say why? Because my mouth was bigger than it should have been. <laughs> I'm serious. But you know what? You can tell him about him. But more than that, you can let him see Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. What happened to you? That's what they asked me. Bob, why ain't we going to this? What, come on, meet us. No, I can't do that no more. Why? Because uh, God don't want me doing that. He, but let me tell you what Jesus Christ did for me. Might not have worked too well, buddy. But Chuck on that job. Three grown men bowed their head and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save them. Say, because of you? No, sir. Because I was willing to let Jesus Christ be seen 
and worship and praise him and give him all the glory and open my mouth to say, hey, it's not me, it's what I have in me. He'll do it for you. How about you this morning? You say, preacher, I've become complacent. I've drifted back. I'm not doing, hey, you know what? The sweetest thing you can do is just, hey, God, me and you, let's get this thing worked out. Lord, I want you to be seen in me. I don't want them to see me. I want them to see you. I want them to hear from you. And Lord, if I've drifted from you and if I've not exalted you in my life, then help me to get that thing taken care of. Bring it. Leave it there. Everything that hits the altar typically dies. Leave it right there. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for a wonderful, wonderful Savior is mine. Lord, you've, <laughs> to say you've done more and been more to me than I could ever hope is beyond words. You are a great God. You gave your son for us that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And you gave your son for us, Lord, that we could just get life. In him is life. And Lord, he paid an awful price for something he didn't do. And so it meant something to me when he said, I must be about my father's business. The reason he was here was to die for us that we can have life through him. So God, I pray your blessings, for your guidance, for your direction. I pray, Lord, that you be in control of this invitation this morning. That maybe, God, there's some things we need to drop off and get rid of, luggage that's holding us down. But God, would you help in God and direct in Jesus' name. Oh, two. 102. 102. Let's all stand. Some folks are praying. The altar is open. If you'd like to come talk to the Lord about some things, we're going to sing about Born Among Cattle in Poverty Sore, Living in Meekness by Galilee Shore. The story of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sing out now. Born among cattle in poverty sore, living in meekness by Galilee shore, dying in shame as the wicked ones sore. Jesus, wonderful Lord, why Wonderful, wonderful Jesus, He is my friend, true to the end. He gave Himself to redeem me. Jesus, wonderful Lord, weary and He is. Only rest, hungry and thirsty, with plenty has blessed. Tempted, he promises grace for each test. Jesus, wonderful Lord, wonderful, wonderful Jesus. He is my friend, true to the end. He gave himself to redeem me. Jesus, wonderful Lord, friend of the friendless, betrayed and denied. Help of the weak in Gethsemane cried. Light of the world in gross darkness, he died. Jesus, 
us wonderful Lord wonderful wonderful Jesus he is my friend true to the end he gave himself to redeem me Jesus wonderful Lord Amen Father thank you for today thank you Lord that uh, you've done so much for us it'll take eternity for us to to, uh, proclaim enough or to speak enough of your goodness. And Lord, how wonderful you are, Lord, in your salvation, in your service, in your uh, supplication, Lord, and all the things that you do for us. Praise the Lord that you bless this day. Pray that you take care of each and every need and each and every heart. Pray that you bring us back uh, this evening, and we'll thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.